Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you? Uh, I'm going to try to stay on time because it's actually the first day of my bachelor party weekend. So <laughs> what better way to start this off than with you guys? Yeah. It's going to get wild in here. Um, <laughs> So my name is Mike Lee. Uh, I have a company called Studio Industries. We do product design and innovation for food. Um, and six months ago, uh, me and seven other uh, co-conspirators, actually one of them's in the audience right now, Nikki, if you can raise your hand. Uh, we, there she is. Um, we locked ourselves in a beach house on the Jersey Shore uh, for five days. And we built the foundation of a project called the Future Market. Whoa project called The Future Market. Um, the Future Market's a grocery store that tries to envision the world of 2065 through the lens of food. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about what that actually means, but I want to talk to you today actually about why I think this is important and why it's relevant. And I think the answer really comes back to just the value of aspirational thinking. In fact, the future market was actually inspired by something that had nothing to do with food, um, and that was auto shows. I grew up in Detroit, um, and every year, one of the things that we did all the time was to go to the auto show. I'm not really a car guy, so I could really care less what the 1989 Ford Taurus looked like. It was more about the concept cars for me. I always got excited at the concept cars because they were dreamy, they were cool, and it really made me feel like somebody, even at a big car company, was really thinking about the future. Was really thinking about the future and it felt really optimistic that it was going to get better, that it wasn't going to get worse. And that's really the value of what I saw at the auto show every year uh, in the concept cars. So you know, you fast forward today and you see versions of what those auto companies did um, you know, a lot today. Um, in other industries, this is Elon Musk's Hyperloop. You know, for, for him, it wasn't enough to create an electric car. He wanted to put people in a tube and shuttle them from San Francisco to LA in 13 minutes. You know? Will this get made? Does it matter? I think the value in this idea is that he had the audacity to kind of put it out there and change the conversation. Google's self-driving car. Even Amazon puts out things like the self-delivery drone, right? So you fast forward now, and you know, working in food for the better part of the last decade, I kept wondering, where is food's answer to this kind of stuff? Who was doing that auto show concept car stuff? Who was doing stuff like you know, Amazon Prime's delivery drone? Stuff that didn't need to necessarily be commercially viable or reasonable right now, but just presented an idea that was really, really aggressive. And I started to think about you know, who was doing that in food, and was that valuable? You know, what's the value of putting out ideas that never actually have to make it to market, that just pose an idea? And I think about a guy named Martin Cooper to answer that question. Martin Cooper was the head of R&D at Motorola. And in the 70s, he created the very thing that you guys are probably all holding at or looking at right now, which is the cell phone. Um, all things aside, you know, the technological uh, feat of just creating a cell phone, um, you know, I can't understate how amazing that was. But the thing that really kind of amazed me when I learned about Martin's story was that he said one of the biggest things that inspired him to create the cell phone was Star Trek. <laughs> so hang on to that for a second, you know. So you got to imagine, like, you're in the 70s. And your reality is wrapped in the idea that phones just have cords, right? He had the audacity to get in front of a meeting of his peers, of very smart people, and, and kind of follow along this idea that he saw on a science fiction television show and say, I want to pursue this, and I want to create what I saw here uh, that Captain Kirk has. Now, of course, today, you know, this all seems obvious. It all seems obvious in retrospect, but at the time, this vision that he saw in science fiction gave him the audacity to go forward with what he wanted to do and create the cell phone. So this really brings me back to the theme of why we wanted to make the future market. And we think that better innovation in food today, it really starts with more ambitious thinking about tomorrow. 
I hope I'm preaching to the choir here because I think the kind of people that come to you know, food conferences like this, you guys are the innovators. You guys are ambitiously thinking. Um, so that's great, but you don't have to step too far into an average normal grocery store in America to kind of see how much further we have to go on this. You walk down grocery stores all across America and you know, where are the concept cars? You know, what's food's answer to this? But I think now is the time, you know, is, it's the right time for something like Future Market because there's never been more startups in the food space. Uh, this is a graphic from Food Tech Connect and you know, it's kind of purposely an eye chart because this is just a small slice of all the companies out there, many of who are, are in this audience right now, doing really amazing things trying to change the food world. Last year, you know, the food tech sector alone got about $6 billion in venture funding, which, you know, is great. Um, it's still a fraction of, you know, just overall tech, which gets, you know, $48 billion. But I think, you know, that number is going to rise, and I think there's a lot of attention fueling the future innovators. So back at that beach house, this is the question that we hung on for five days. What could a grocery store and its products look like in the year 2065? And the grocery store as a focal point really ends up telling you a story about the rest of the world, right? Because everything in our grocery store today is really an artifact of how our world is set up, how food is produced, and how we like to consume food, what we like, what we prefer. And we were hoping to say, you know, the put, let's put the future market out there. What concepts could we present that were so ambitious that today, we could inspire this sort of loop again. You know, how could we put something out there that was going to be the Captain Kirk to today's Martin Cooper, only for food, right? This was what we were trying to create with, with the future market, and we're just getting started. This is a very early sketch. Uh, this project started six months ago, and we're currently in development. But what we plan to do is launch a digital version and then a physical version in uh, New York City later this year, where it sort of feels like a grocery store in that you know, we want to use that as a storytelling mechanism because people you know, kind of understand what that feels like. But we want to have artifacts and stories in the aisles that feel like they're from another world. You might ask, why did I choose 50 years? Why 2065? You know, most people you know, just trying to get through this year or next five years or next 10 years at the most. We chose 50 years because it's sufficiently long enough that it abstracts time and it abstracts reality. It leaves your biases at the door, you know? The future market is not a trade show where you'll go and kind of scrutinize, oh, the price point of this or, you know, the size of this, the marketability of that. That's not what this is. This is for, you know, let go of what you know right now and just feel free to explore a little bit. You guys are all probably doing something really interesting in food right now. Think for a second what that would look like in 50 years. What obstacles are you battling day to day right now that in 50 years have already been you know, killed? What does that vision look like? And if that vision can inspire you to work harder or work differently today, then you know, that's sort of what we're trying to go for at the future market. We have six aisles. The six aisles uh, represent six themes that we see. Um, you know, have the capability to change the, the future of food. Distributed production. Um, one, you know, David had a fascinating talk about, you know, his stuff at Aero Farms, but I think our centralized farming system is sort of broken. It was set up in a time when gas was cheap and it was economical to kind of centralize production and ship it everywhere. I think that's broken right now. So this aisle explores how we produce food in more decentralized systems and more stuff on site. Hyper customization. Um, you know, there used to be just one kind of flour you could buy. Now, you know, you go to Smorgasbord and there's, you know, a variety of all these things that you can see. Um, you know, how can we get them even more customized to, to, to what people want in the future? Alternative proteins, you'll see Andres talk in a minute and uh, the guys at EXO today about how we are creating different sources of protein to kind of wean us off or wean us away from the current system of protein, uh, which is so damaging to the, to the environment. Eliminating waste, you know, I think we probably waste more food in America than some countries produce, and I think that's a problem that deserves speaking about. 
Mass sustainability, I think in today's world, in some cases, sustainability and scale are sort of mutually exclusive. So we wanna try to explore the tension between that, and this is actually where we have our first prototype product where I'll, I'll talk about in one second. And then population growth. You know, like Dorothy said before, um, the world is growing at an exponential rate, and in order to feed people uh, in the future, a lot of innovation needs to really, really happen. We made one rule for ourselves, too, is just to not make shit up. We didn't want this to be kind of a Game of Thrones fantasy thing. The idea is more to extrapolate the smaller ideas or the early ideas today and then grow them to 50 years from now and say, what if that small idea today became the big idea tomorrow? You know? So extrapolating on a timeline, not just making stuff up. We debuted at the Future of Food Expo with our first product, and we actually set it up like a trade show. Um, but our first prototype product under that mass sustainability uh, idea is called Crop Crisps. Crop Crisps, it's a snack for the masses. It's driven by crop rotation. So today's world, a lot of products are driven by monoculture farming. You've got wheat all the time, wheat, wheat, wheat. And the expectation is that you can have it all the time. And as a result, it's really damaging to the environment. Crop crisps come in four flavors, and actually you can never buy these four flavors all at the same time. Um, you buy them year to year based on when the crop rotation is. So in year one, if we're planting lentils, that's the product that's out there because that's what the crops are, are being planted. Next year we've got a wheat, and then we come back to garbanzo fava, and then wheat, and so on. So, you know, crop rotation, we definitely didn't invent that. We didn't invent crackers. But the idea that we, we posed is that uh, and this purposefully looks like a big mass product, not because, you know, you know, but because we wanted to really show like how far that industry has gone. I think the idea here is to say like, in the future, I think something has happened to a world where even at scale, in mass, large companies need to focus on uh, you know, doing stuff like this, crop rotation, mass sustainability. We even went as to far to, as to create a, a fictitious newspaper of the year 2065, uh, and this is sort of our tongue-in-cheek kind of way to explore themes that we think you know could exist. Um, it's a really long-form fun format, but we can't build this alone. You know, we have some ideas about the future, but really, this is a platform for all the innovators out there. Ask yourself, you know, what that vision of what you're doing looks like in 50 years, and we want to play with you guys and get dirty with you and put you guys in the store. Uh, the future market really just aims to be a true retailer of ideas. So if you have ideas, reach out to us, and thank you. <laughs>